talk about old-fashioned drive-in movie theaters with Michael Youngden, who happens to own the Mansfield Drive-In. You go back a long time with drive-in theaters. Tell me about that. Well, I started uh, managing the Mansfield Drive-In Theater in 1974. And then... You're just a kid then, right? I, well, <laughs> I was in my 20s, you know. And uh, within a few years, I started leasing the theater, and then it took me until 1991 to actually buy the property there. Now, when you were managing it in 1974, there were thousands of drive-in movie theaters across the country. Now there's less than 400. What happened to them? Well, a lot of what happened to them is that the property that they were located on was worth a lot of money. And drive-in movie theater wasn't necessarily the highest and best use. So we actually, in Connecticut, we lost quite a few drive-ins in 1985, which happened to be the year that I added two screens to the Mansfield drive-in. Now you have everybody three thought I was now? crazy. Yes. So you added two screens. You've got three now. Right. You've made it. You opened in 1954, Mansfield did? Yes, it did. So it's still open. You've diversified. Tell me Absolutely. what all is going on there. I mean, the, the other big thing that we have going on there is that we uh, have a, a flea market every Sunday from like 8 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon. And it has really blossomed and become huge over the years. I mean, we, we probably host, oh, 300 vendors on any wow. given Sunday. So you're helping small day. business at the same time. Absolutely. Small business helping people that use it to like uh, supplement their social security. Um, it's quite an event. Back in the 70s, paint me a picture of the Mansfield Drive-In. How many cars would show up back then? Well, the, not that many. It was very, like 1974 was a very low point for uh -huh. drive-in movie theaters, I think. And back then the technology was also more difficult, you know. We, we were using arc carbons to uh, light the screen, so you're like, got to have a welder that's lighting your screen for you. And, um, it, you know, had to have speakers for each car, those little squawk boxes for every single car Oh, I car remember that you adjusting those as a kid. I was telling you yeah. that there, I'm one of four, and we would load up the Ford LTD station wagon you with bet. the, you know, the fake panel on the side. And, oh, yeah. And off to the movies we would go in our pajamas. It was a yeah. great time. Well, it's still a great time. So tell me and about what's happening there now. And there's still kids in pajamas, too. That's good. <laughs> so on a, on a given night, in your year round, Correct? With no, the, we're oh, you not. start in no. March. You start in March. Okay, we started this year a little bit early. Normally, we're open on weekends starting April 1st, and then we go full time seven nights a week when the kids, like the high school kids and grammar school kids, get out of school for the summer and stay open while they're on their vacation every single night. Then we go back to like Fridays and Saturdays uh, in September. What has kept you alive, do you think? You've adapted, you've got three screens. I mean, back in the heyday, this was a great place where hundreds of cars would show up. How can you make this a resurgence, do you think? Or, or will it? Will they all die off eventually well, because of technology? Well, hundreds of cars still show up. How many do you have on a, on a given night? If, well, it really depends upon weather and movies. Uh -huh. You know, so it could be way different. But if we had a really good night, we would have in excess of 800 cars. Wow. So, and that's a lot of people to keep track of. And how many acres do you have? Well, all together there, we have about 40 acres, but we, for the drive-in itself, we probably use between 10 and 15. Back in the day, when you started to be a general manager in 1974, did you, did you study any of the history of drive-ins and, and how they popped up over the country? Not too much. What I've what? always been busy doing it rather than figuring out what other people did. Hardest thing about owning a drive-in theater these days in the state of Connecticut? Um, well, the hard, this is a time that is very volatile in the movie business in general. 
so that drive-ins are going to have to become more event-oriented rather than just you go and see a movie. You're going to have to have other attractions for people as well. So the hardest thing is to just figure out what you're going to do that way. Which you have with the flea market. That well, helps, Well, the flea right? market does very well for yeah. us. But, um, you know, some of the uh, more successful drive-ins in New England are doing things like uh, um, concert movies on the screen with live bands before, you know, cover bands. They've been doing a lot of stuff with the Grateful Dead. And uh, it becomes an event for these people, and it, and it brings a lot more people in for a longer period of time. Have you thought about doing that at Mansfield? Well, we'll have to talk to the town fathers in Mansfield. <laughs> yeah, have to get it passed first. <laughs> now, you said when I talked about, you know, will, will they see a resurgence, you said they're, they're building more drive-ins in Texas that you know about. There are, and they are also places that are event places as well. And they, they build them with like eight or 10 screens now, you know, out there in Texas, you know? And they, they have live music, they, they, there they have liquor licenses, you know, um, which is something that I've stayed away from all of my life, which I think is not that I've stayed away from liquor, but I've stayed <laughs> away from selling it. Right, because it, it can turn into something else. Now, you said you were a member of, of a national association yes. uh, with movie theaters. What are you seeing new trends in, in outdoor movie theaters? Um, well, certainly, I mean, there's been a lot of change recently technology-wise, you know, when we had to, three years ago, we converted from film to digital. And we were the first drive-in in New England to do that, by the way. But just that was a major undertaking, having to change all of the technology. It was hugely expensive. And um, so then the next thing, I think, is just to add more attractive things for, for the people to come. Now, I haven't been to a drive-in movie theater in years and years and years. How do I listen to a movie theater these days if I don't have that little box where I roll down the window? Look at me rolling. Where yeah, you don't roll yeah. down windows anymore. How do you listen to a movie these days? <laughs> Nowadays, we transmit the movie in stereo on your FM radio. So you just tune on into a frequency that we have. We have a different frequency designated for uh, each different movie. I'll be darned. So, well, I appreciate you coming in and, and talking about outdoor movie theaters, and I hope you last for years and years to come. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Spend all night kissing and a bomb is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor.